you guys have to know that whenever they give you trig functions in calculus, most of the time they work out pretty. So, don't get scared of them. Let's just use what we know. First thing we got to do is find the critical points. We already know the endpoints. So, we have um, f of, uh, what is it, uh, 0 and f of pi, or 2 pi, right? So, we're going to have to test those. We're going to have to find those values to see if they're maxes or mins. But we also need to find the, what should we call it, the critical points. So to do that, we need f prime. So I'm going to take the derivative of sine, and which we know is cosine x. And then before I take the derivative of this, I'm going to rewrite him, because I know a lot of you guys aren't seeing this. So you guys see the power on the, on the trig function? It's actually, you can rewrite it like this. And if you rewrite it like this, you might remember that you have to use a chain rule for this. So that means it's going to be plus 2 cosine x. That's the derivative of the outside function, which is squared. And I have to multiply it times the derivative of the inside function. What is the derivative of cosine? Negative sine. Negative sine x. Right? So if I rewrite this, it will be cosine x plus, I'm sorry, not plus, minus 2 cosine x sine x. Oh, so pretty. Now we're setting this thing equal to zero. Now in order to solve this, we're going to factor. And we're going to factor out a cosine. So look at that cosine right there. Can we take a cosine out of both of those? <coughs> Heck yeah, doggies and doggettes. We get one for the first one. And the next one, we're going to get minus two sine x. And right now, you're still thinking, how is this going to be pretty? Um, watch this. Cosine x equals zero and 1 minus 2 sine x equals 0. Now the first one, no problem, let's do that. Okay, and I know some of you guys need this. Um, we're going to put uh, uh, the unit circle right here. Wow, look at that, that's a perfect circle. Okay, do you guys know uh, which one was cosine, which one was sine? The, the, it, okay, so it's cosine and then sine, right? The, the, the cosine is the, are the x values, and sine are the y values. So where on this circle is x equal to 0? Pi over 2. Pi over 2. This right here, which is pi over 2. So that means x right here equals pi over 2, because that would give me a 0. And what's the other value that will give me a 0? 3 pi over 2. And right now you're thinking, dang, man, I wish they had, like, shortened up this interval right here because then one of these guys would get cut out. But they didn't. And then the next one, we're going to have to subtract one from both sides. So check out what happens. I get uh, negative 1, and I divide both sides by negative 2, so I get sine x equals 1 over 2. Where on this unit circle right here is y equal to 1 half? Now we know that this is 1 right here because it's called a unit circle. So that means this is 1 half right there. So I have points right there and right there. Do you guys remember the angle value right there? Yeah, pi over 6 is one of my answers. So I have x equals pi over 6. And the other one is? 5 pi over 6. Oh, is it all coming back to you? No? You're making me do stuff I don't want to do. Must be math. Okay. So we have to find f of pi over 6, we have to find f of 5 pi over 6, and we have to find f of uh, pi over 2, and then we have to find f of 3 pi over 2. Now there could be a shorter way of doing this, but you guys have to find it if there is. So you got one? Okay, what did you guys get? What did you guys get for 2 pi? Hey, hey, are you guys awake? You, you see I'm talking to you, right? Yeah. Okay, what'd you guys get for 2 pi? One. You got one also? Are you sure? Yeah. What'd you guys get for the next one? 5 over 4? Yeah. What'd you guys get? 5 over 4. You guys got 5 over 4 too? What'd you guys get? 1. Well, so there's like a pattern going on here. What'd you guys get? Negative 1. Negative 1? All right, guys, do you guys know which one's the minimum? Negative, negative. negative 1? Okay. You guys are good. Okay, do you guys know what the maximum is? Five over four. Oh, it's one of those guys, huh? These guys are the maxes because they're, they're slightly more than one. 
Okay, that's interesting. Don't you guys want to see this thing? No. Oh, come on. <laughs> you guys are boring. I want to see it. So do I. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's do it. Okay, um, we're done with you guys. Okay, wait, we, we do have an upper limit here. We have 2 pi right there, and then this one is uh, 0, right? Yeah. Okay, and then uh, let's make our x values count in pi's. So we're going to change the step to pi. All right. Okay. So from. Oh, thanks for a two-minute warning. Okay. Um, <laughs> all right. Uh, what what is the, what was the function? It was cosine. Cosine x plus. Wait, was sine first. Yeah. Oh, sine x plus cosine squared. Plus. Cosine squared. Cosine. Oh, that one has to be squared, huh? Yeah. So I'm gonna put the x there, and I'm gonna go like this. Um, I'm gonna put a parenthesis there and a parenthesis right here. And square that dude. Oh, that looks weird. Oh, that's because our y values are messed up. Uh, let's do lowest y value is negative 1. And we'll do the highest y value as 1. Oh, dang. Oh, wait, we want to do 2, huh? Why don't you guys tell me before I wrote it? Oh, thank you. So, 2. There it is. Okay. So there's your negative 1, there's your 1, there's your um, 1.25, and there's your other 1.25. That's not bad though, huh? That's still, that looks neat. <laughs>